um, the Earth's atmosphere, although it has a relatively constant pressure, it does have variations in the weather people you know, meteorologists talk about low pressure regions and high pressure regions. And variations in the pressure of Earth's atmosphere is what creates wind, and changes in the pressure can help us predict the weather. Have you ever thought about why is there wind? I mean, you can make wind by blowing on something, right? But is there some giant out there blowing and making the wind? Why is it windy on some days and not on other days? This is a day of me asking unanswerable questions. High pressure and low pressure systems um, cause wind. So the number of particles in a given volume decreases with increasing altitude. As you go higher and higher above sea level, the concentration of gas particles is less and less. So atmospheric pressure decreases with altitude. I think most of us are somewhat familiar with that. If you've ever been up to Grant Grove, it's like, I don't know, six, 7,000 feet above sea level, right? And the air, we say, is thinner up there. If you exercise, you're going to get out of breath more easily. There's just not as much oxygen in the air. There's not as much nitrogen or argon or carbon dioxide either. The air is thinner. It's less concentrated. And as you keep going up, up and up and up and up, it gets less and less concentrated until it gets to a point where there's just not enough oxygen to sustain a human life, right? You can't breathe. Um, the pressure of a gas depends on how many gas particles are in a given volume, which is essentially a concentration. So here we have two jars. Um, this jar has fewer particles, and this jar has more particles. So the pressure in this jar is going to be less. These particles are moving around, they're hitting the walls, but there's fewer of them in the same volume than in this jar. So this is higher pressure, this is lower pressure. We can think of this as a higher concentration of gas particles. You could think of gas pressure in terms of molarity, moles per liter of volume. Um, you could figure that out. That's not really a very useful term. We can also talk about gas density, because uh, the density of a gas will change. Densities of liquids don't change very much. Densities of solid don't change very, very much. Gas densities can change crazy much. I just made that up. Um, pressure explains why your ears pop. If you fly in an airplane, the cabin is pressurized, because otherwise everybody would pass out when you got up to cruising altitude. Um, but the pressure is different it's a little lower than what's present um, down here on the ground, and so our ears pop. If you drive up to Grant Grove, your ears pop. And then when you come back down, they pop again. So what's going on there? Well, inside your ear, you have an eardrum that separates the middle and outer ear from your inner ear. So, you know, if you get water in your ear, it's not going to go all the way into your brain. There's an eardrum there that's going to stop it. It doesn't actually go directly to your brain anyway, but that's okay. Um, we we kind of think that, right? It would just go straight through? No? Um, so when the external pressure is reduced, there is some air in your inner ear, and the pressure there has regular pressure, like you had down here on the, on, um, the floor of the valley. And so there's a pressure imbalance, and so your eardrum will bulge out. It doesn't feel very nice. If you've, if you've got a cold or an ear infection, it can be excruciating. But your eardrum will bulge out because of the pressure in here. So how does your body relieve that? Well, you have a eustachian tube that goes down into the back of your throat, and it can release that pressure that way. And we perceive that as a popping sensation. So when your ears pop and then things feel better, sound better, that's the pressure in here being released. When you come back down, the opposite is true. You've got high pressure outside and low pressure inside. Your eardrum's going to bulge the other way, and it's going to be uncomfortable until you get your ears to pop again. Yawning or chewing gum helps because it helps to open up this eustachian tube. It's worse if you have a cold and things are swollen. 
babies have little tiny eustachian tubes, and so that's why they scream on airplanes. It's not because they're trying to annoy you. Their ears hurt, uh, and then that makes our ears hurt because they're so loud, right? Any questions? You didn't know you were going to get an anatomy lesson and um, a weather lecture today. How do we measure pressure? Well, we can use a mercury barometer to measure atmospheric pressure. Um, the original mercury barometer was pretty simple. It was a very long glass tube. Um, it has to be more than 760 millimeters. That doesn't mean a lot, even to me. Um, it needs to be more than 29.92 inches long. So think of a glass tube really about a yard long and filled with mercury, liquid mercury. It's, an, it's a metal, it's a liquid at room temperature. It has a high density, about 13.6 grams per milliliter. And you invert it into a dish of mercury. And what's interesting is that some of the mercury runs out, but there's, there's a column of mercury that remains. If you do this with like a glass, I mean, my kids used to do this with cups in the bathtub, right? And you take a, a clear plastic cup and you've got it under the water and you turn it upside down and you pull it up. And so the top of the, the lid of the cup is still under the surface of the bathtub water. The water stays in there, right? And it's like, ooh, that's kind of magic, right? Actually, it's, it's not magic at all. The atmospheric pressure is pushing down on the liquid outside the cup or the tube, and gravity is pulling down on the liquid inside. And if those are um, out of balance, if the atmospheric pressure is greater, then the liquid will completely stay in the, in the cup or the tube. And that's what happens with water, because water is so much less dense than, than mercury. Mercury is, is more dense, and so the column of mercury will only be about 30 inches tall. Doesn't matter how long the tube is, doesn't matter how wide or how narrow, it's going to be about that same height. If you take this thing and walk up a hill, which is something that Torricelli did, um, as you go up in elevation, the height of the column of mercury slowly gets shorter and shorter and shorter because atmospheric pressure is getting less and it can support a shorter column of mercury. So this was uh, the first method of measuring atmospheric pressure. And it's the origin of a very odd unit of pressure called a millimeter of mercury. A millimeter is a unit of length, and mercury is an element. And so a length of an element seems like a weird unit for pressure, right? But it is the height of a column of mercury. So a millimeter of mercury, um, higher pressure, higher column. So Average atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury, which corresponds to 29.92 inches of mercury. And when the, you know, the weatherman says, oh, the, the atmospheric pressure today is 29.82, he's, he's meaning inches of mercury, and that's referring to height of a column of mercury. That's what the little weather station says right here. So that's an odd unit. Um, they made a unit called a TOR in honor of Torricelli, who invented this barometer. Um, and we do use TOR. A, one TOR is exactly the same as a millimeter of mercury. But we also still use this, this term. And so adding the, the, the unit TOR, I don't think really simplified anything. It just gave us another unit to mess around with. Fine. So these are some common pressure units. The reason we have lots of different units is because they're useful in different situations. So a Pascal is the SI system uh, unit of pressure. It's a Newton per meter squared, not very useful in chemistry. Uh, we might see this come up for conversion problems, but other than that, we're really not going to use it. So average pressure at sea level would be 101,325 Pascals. You do not need to memorize that. PSI is something we use more in our everyday life. If your tire is, is getting a little flat and you need to go pump it up, you need to know how many PSI to pump it up, right? So you don't want to explode the tire. Did that once with a wheelbarrow. It's not as fun as it sounds. It's a little scary. 14.7 um, pounds per square inch. 
So this is also a pressure unit, force pounds divided by area, square inches. So PSI stands for pounds per square inch. One atmosphere is 14.7 PSI. The tor, or the millimeter of mercury, um, 760 tor, or 760 millimeters of mercury. This says exact here. All of these are giving us one atmosphere of pressure. That's another unit. One atmosphere is exactly 760 tor, because they decided it was. We could also measure the height of the column of mercury in inches, and so that'd be 29.92 inches of mercury. You can convert between millimeters of mercury and inches of mercury by converting millimeters to inches. You definitely could do that, or you can just use this guy right here. So which ones do you need to know? You need to know um, the tor and the atmosphere. So you need to know that one atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury, and it's equal to one atmosphere. The way pressure unit tables are usually given is all of these numbers describe the same pressure. They describe one atmosphere. And so to convert between pressure units, it's always one step. That's kind of nice. You don't have to go lots and lots of things together. So conversion factors for pressure on an exam will be shown something like this, except you need to know that first line. But I might give you the second line if you need it. So your lo local weather report announces that the barometric pressure is 30.44 inches of mercury. Convert this pressure to PSI. This is dimensional analysis with a different type of conversion factor. So we start with 30.44 inches of mercury. And we want PSI. So it's just one step. PSI on top, inches of mercury on the bottom. So those cancel. Everything here is equal to everything else. They are all equal to one atmosphere. So 101,325 pascals is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. That's why all of it's one step. So we just find PSI in here, 14.7. And we find inches of mercury, sorry, and, and put that number in here. And then we dig out the calculator. Thirty point four four times fourteen point seven divided by twenty nine point nine two. So calculator is giving me bunch of digits here. How many sig figs should I have? Three, four. I hear three and I hear four. Three. Okay, this 14.7, that's not exact. This Pascal's isn't exact. The 29.92 is not exact. The 760 is exact, but the rest of these are not. One thing I don't like about your book is that they round that to 14. Point seven. It's actually 14.69, um, but we used 14.7. So we've got three significant figures. So we round the nine up, and that rounds the four up, and we need to add a zero in there. So we get 15.0 PSI. Any questions? So barometer measures atmospheric pressure. <clears throat> what if we want to measure the pressure inside something? Well, the manometer measures the pressure of a gas inside a container. So this is a very simple manometer, again using mercury. So here's the container um, in which we're measuring the pressure. This is attached to a tube that has this U-shaped bend in it, and there's mercury in that, in that U. So if this end of the tube was open to atmospheric pressure, what would, um, what would these levels of mercury do? They'd, they'd be the same, right? If this was open and that side was open, 
they, they, they'd equalize, right? They'd do something like this. Oh, I gotta get a pen out here. It'd be something like this, right? Because that's what liquids do. It, it goes to the bottom and it settles out and it's level. But here, this side is lower. Why is that? Well, that's because there's higher pressure in here. This is like someone blowing on this end of the tube, right? It pushes the mercury down on this side, and then it has to go up on that side. Of course, nobody's blowing, but there's pressure here. So the pressure is pushing the mercury down on this side, and so it has to come up on that side. Why isn't it just shooting all the way out? Because there's atmospheric pressure pushing down on this side. So what we're measuring here, we measure with a ruler the difference in height between the two columns of mercury. That gives us the difference in pressure between the pressure inside the container and the atmospheric pressure. So it doesn't give us a definite reading of, oh, this is what the pressure, but if we know the atmospheric pressure, we can calculate that difference and we can find the pressure inside. So this would also be measured in millimeters of mercury. Of course, we don't use mercury barometers and mercury manometers anymore because mercury is toxic. Yeah, question? Why wouldn't you use atmospheric pressure and not... Why would you use mercury units instead of atmospheric units? Well, that's a good question. Why would you use um, inches or millimeters of mercury instead of atmospheres? Because how many atmospheres is this? No. So the, the pressure outside is, is probably about one atmosphere, right? But the pressure in here, you actually measure it by measuring the difference, the height of the column of mercury with a ruler. It's like crazy simple stuff. Scientists were doing this long before electricity was discovered, before we knew what atoms or molecules were. I mean, this is, I forget exactly which century, but it's like 1700s, something like that. Long time ago. So this is like extremely primitive, and yet it works really, really well. So that's why you can't measure that in, in atmospheres. Now, of course, this is not how we measure pressure today. We have all kinds of cool gadgets, right? We have different types of pressure meters. So we don't have to do this anymore. The reason we talk about this is it helps us to understand what's going on. This isn't a little black box that gives us a number. We can see that this pressure inside is pushing down on this side more than atmospheric pressure is pushing down on that side. If the pressure in here was lower than atmospheric pressure, what would the column of mercury do? It would be higher on the right and lower on the left. And the difference would be equal to the difference in pressure between the inside and the outside. 